All right, we're live. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the Journey Within. This is a journey of deconstruction and reconstruction of a death and rebirth. And today, I am very excited and honored to be joined by the lovely Louise. Louise, thank you so much for coming on and, and having this, this interview, this talk. I'm really looking forward to it. It's such an honor, it's such a blessing. I've actually been tuning in to your live streams that you've been doing and absolutely loved the guests oh. you had on. It's been amazing. Really? Oh, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so happy. I need to get this out more. Um, so, I yeah, it's one of those things I, I know I need to do. It's on YouTube, and then obviously I stream it on, pla uh, on um, Facebook. But I feel like I can get more viewers if I just like uploaded it in these different platforms. So yeah. looking really bad. Yeah. You've got amazing content. It's definitely worth spreading. And for everyone who's listening to this, whenever you like one of any of Justin's streams, go ahead and comment and share them with people that you know and help him spread his magic around the world. Thank you, thank you. Well, we're gonna be spreading your magic. So yeah, tell us, you know, what kind of magic you do. I love that question, what kind of magic you do, especially since I've been watching The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit recently. Interesting. <laughs> and and uh, I really have been so inspired and I feel watching the elves in those programs and all of the magic that's just found in the obvious, but then also in the movies, it's in the every day life you know from anyone who's watched it from you know the little hobbits from the shire that have their magic in maybe the more simpler ways and so i really love how every single person has their own expression of what magic is and every single person has something so unique to bring to our lives as a collective and I'm so passionate about using my magic to activate everybody to really fully understand who they are mm -hmm. and the magic that they bring to life because every single person is really, really needy right now. And that's my mission. My mission is to make people really realize and cultivate what is their gifts, specifically with the intention of, well, if every single person was to show up really authentically who they are in full recognition of their gifts, where would that empowerment take us? For example, everybody listening here, if you had all of the resources available to you in life, what would you create differently than what's already going on? Oh, yeah. And that's what really excites me is that potential and that possibility that we really do get to change any systems or way of beings that doesn't serve us. And that only comes from within. We know that we'll never change anything outside of ourselves by focusing purely on the outside. All of the ancient texts in, in yoga always direct us and tell us so. It comes from within. Yeah. So here I am on my journey to support this process and this awakening of each individual to their greater purpose. I love that. I like how, well, first of all, you're already coaching all of us here. I love the <laughs> questions. You're definitely this, this coach, this master coach. And uh, I, I love how you took it from, you, you took it to identity. And then what are you going to create from that identity? It's just, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so this this begs the question of like, who are we really? Yeah, that is one of the best questions we can ask ourselves. And I've been on a journey with that question, like, who are we? No, but really, <laughs> but really guys, really, what's going on here? Who am I? Who, who are you? Who are we? <laughs> And different parts of my journey, I've been on a plant medicine path for about seven years or so. And before that, I was, you know, a sports physiotherapist who lived in a city and, 
you know, live my my younger glamour years drinking champagne and, you know, Vegas. Oh. And I, I let all that go because I would ask myself, who am I? Who are we? What's going on? And that took me deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until the really existential question of who am I? And is there is there even really a reason for me to be here? And I've been to those places in my life and my search. Like, seriously, is there is there a point in my existence? Yeah. Is there? <laughs> yeah. And it was a, an uncomfortable place to go into. But one of the most liberating things I've I've ever done in my life, and I think it's the best question that we get to ask ourselves. And again, this is why I feel really passionate about my work. I've done this on my own, reflecting on this question, who am I? And I've also done it with support. And when I was supported and felt safe to explore these really deep layers of, of my mind, of my psyche, of my consciousness, of myself, then you feel really safe and held and you get to uncover and reveal certain aspects about yourself. And that's for all of us to answer, right? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. So this is, I mean, it sounds like this takes like a, a, a lifetime. Takes Perhaps. Like a, maybe. Perhaps, or yeah. In a second. Yeah, and the, the, the thing about... I love to work in, in the quantum field and a lot of my work is very linked in the quantum and another way we can say that and I know Albert Einstein has said that life's just moments of now, 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 now and it creates our life and it's not in a linear timeline, it's just all happening. Um, so if we look at it like that, and it's not a linear process uh, where we're here and we need to go there or we're behind and we need to go forwards and we're just simply here. Now, this has, again, been a really challenging thing for me in my path, in my life. And hey, I still have my moments of struggling to be here in the present moment. So what would it take for all of us right now, this includes Justin and myself, to be present in this moment? So let's just go ahead and just take a few breaths in and take a few breaths out. And as you breathe out, just really let something go. And call your energy back to you from any conversations, past or future, and go ahead and call your energy back from any space-time dimensions to this moment. Who are you? Now. And you get to choose that. And knowing that there's another now, and oh, we're in another now, and oh, we're in another now. <laughs> That gets to change, you know? The, the I, person that we choose to become or choose to be? Either, but if we're be becoming, then that's, that's a future now that anchors us into who we want to be. And that's great because it helps us decide who we're gonna be now. <laughs> so we always have to bring it back to now. Um, so it's great, you know, we get to have like a game with this because Right now, I'm on this beautiful podcast with Justin. And of course, who am I now? Well, right now, I'm showing up as I'm that master coach, right? Mm. But maybe when my husband comes home, and I don't know, we, there might be something with the laundry, maybe I get triggered, maybe I'm someone who's in a trigger in a process. It's cool, right? Maybe I decide to be, oh, do you know, I'm going to be the person who really decides to take action on that thing I wanted to call into my life. If I wanted a puppy, maybe I'm going to, I'm going to actually look into to getting one and, and, and make that decision today for myself. And who am I? Who am I? <laughs> who am I? And it's great because we're all of it and we're none of it, right? Hmm. Um. I used to take this game really seriously. 
this is who I am. <laughs> yeah. What is um, what does that look like when you take it seriously? When I take it seriously, this is on a personal level. I feel um, constricted. I don't feel free to express. I feel like somebody who puts a lot of pressure on myself to be a certain way. I feel like somebody who has like horse blinkers on and misses out on opportunities and, and connections. Um, and maybe somebody who has judgments of others more than the normal when I'm in a more fixed version of who I think I am. Hmm. So it, it sounds like when, when we're in, I guess, judgment, or perhaps not here in the now, then we're not in this flow of we're all these things yet none of these things. So what how did you move from this this kind of fixed mindset where you feel constricted to this being here now and flowing? Yeah, that's such a great question. And it's a big part of, again, in my work. I started off, like I said, as a physiotherapist. So it was really learning, understanding our physical body. And then I just got fascinated by my clients coming in and realizing, oh, there's a connection deeper than just the physical pain of their joint. There's something emotional going on here. I'm aware that when I, I have a conversation with someone, they leave feeling better because their emotions have been held. And that took me on my path to India, learning all about different modalities of our consciousness connected to our body, connected to our emotions. And so for me personally, it's been a journey of looking after my, my physical body, clearing any of the old memory imprints and emotional imprints that are connected to certain thought loops and patterns of thinking mm -hmm. and judging myself. And working on it on all these levels. Okay, well, let me just take a look at my mind take some breaths, have the courage <laughs> to, to do that without judgment. And okay, let me, let me look at how I'm emotionally not showing up in a way that's in my center. When do I lose it with my husband? You know, it doesn't happen often, but of course you, know, <laughs> you find yourself in these little, uh, you know, you feel yourself, wow. Uh, well, what are these moments like? And if I don't judge myself and I just let it play out, what do I learn about myself? Because one of my beliefs is that, you know, when we're maybe stuck or going through patterns again and again, it's, it's simply an invitation for something to learn. Mm. And again, it's like treating it a bit like a game because sometimes we think, oh, that's it, I've, I've got it now and I've, I've worked it out, this is who I am. And, and that might fe feel liberating at times. Oh, I've just realized I'm an, an infinite being connected to source, amazing. Or you might think, oh God, I, I am just really a bad judgmental person. And as I say, the idea is to not get fixed in that and not believe everything that we believe about ourselves, and just be open and just keep getting curious with yourself and know who you are at your core no matter mm -hmm. what you might say to somebody when you're in a good mood or a bad mood or or any of these other human moments that we get swept into who are you beneath all of that the the constant never changing core of you because that's who we really are yeah. and we get to have this beautiful human experience and dive into all of the layers of being a human and I believe that when you do that from this place of liberation and non-judgment go through your mindset go through the emotions go through those little niggles in your body and always come back. That's where we get to find our wholeness. And, you know, I don't know who said this quote. Maybe somebody who's listening might do. And maybe, Justin, you might know yourself. And 
could possibly be Dr. Joe Dispenza, but I'm not sure. But when you finally feel whole and complete, no matter what, <laughs> no matter who you're showing up as, no matter how much money you've got in the bank, no matter how many um, cars you've got, no matter how many friends you've got, we know we could go on and on with this, no matter what, that you're whole and complete. Yeah. No matter if you lose someone that you love, oh, you, I'm whole and complete. And they say that when you realize that you're whole and complete, that's when we get to heal. That's actually when the healing starts. Interesting. See, I would have thought the reverse, right? Once you're whole and complete, that's when the healing ends. Yes. And I, I live my life by that. And that was great. I actually loved believing that. Why, why would I love believing that? Because I was addicted to the patterns of lack. Mm. I'm not good enough. I need to be there. And People might get this. I work a lot with people who are really ambitious, driven people. And they're similar to that. The, next, next, let me evolve. Let me grow. Let me evolve and let me grow, which is amazing. If again, we can bring it back to the present moment and enjoy every step as opposed to always feeling like we're on that hamster wheel and never really getting there. <laughs> now we've all got right. that. Just pause, just hands up. We're waiting on the there when I get there, then I'll be happy. Then I'll be happy. Then I'll be successful. Then I'll be whatever we might project onto that. And as I say, that was great for that pattern within me of never feeling enough and always feeling that I needed to be another version of myself, like the all of my mentors and gurus that I put on beautiful pedestals so I could always be like, when I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> One day. Yeah, then I'll be fulfilled and happy and at peace. <laughs> yeah. Why do you why do you think we do that? Well, I think I love to look at everything in in its extremes and in, in the polarities. Um I think there's there's beautiful ways around all of our patterns because we are infinite beings who are going to be constantly evolving and growing. And it's great to have that. It's such a celebration for those who are showing up to evolve and grow and do better because we need that. Like really, especially now, it's a really easy situation right now in the world to be like, yeah, yeah, we can do better, right? Yeah, we can do better. Let's, so let's do it. Let's, let's strive for something more than who we are now. And that's beautiful. And then on the other side of that, well, why might we doing that? And we might look at it like the, the shadow version. Well, what's maybe in the, in the shadow? And a lot of us feel that we need to prove ourselves to someone else. Or we might even subconsciously still be trying to prove ourselves to our, our parents or our, our caretakers. Like, like look. Like I've, I've done it. Look, I, I got the promotion and, and, I, and I got the, the money and I got the whatever else. And we're proving ourselves. We're becoming a version of ourselves, not again from our core, but to gain that external validation. And again, it's right back to your question, Justin, which I love. Who am I? And we're looking for that external reality to tell us who we are because we're looking at outside reactions oh but when i done that people were like that's amazing oh, oh let me do more of that oh oh yeah well that's that's let let me strive to be something more and more so that i feel more about myself so i, I believe there's these two things One's more trying to stuff and fill the like <laughs> never ending void from the outside. And one is a real beautiful thing that we need if we want to do better and evolve and grow, which we do. Yeah. So it sounds like it's the ambition is not in itself wrong. It's simply where does that ambition come from? Does it yeah. come from the self and the core? Exactly, for sure. And, you know, I've got really beautiful examples of this. 
like one of my clients is a Hollywood actress and she's so successful, got such a drive, such ambition, and she got all the way to the top. And where do you go from there? And there was this feeling of not feeling fulfilled. So we know that if it's just the ambition alone and it's not really serving who we're really here to be and it's maybe more in, in service to ourself, it doesn't feel fulfilled. And we know others examples of people who are really successful. Like I know Taylor Swift shared this. I know Justin Bieber shared this very openly about his breakdowns. And the moment that, as I say, my client realized, oh wait, but this is what I believe in. And she was beautiful in saying, what I actually believe in is that we live in a world that people have access to resources. Like everybody's got the same equal access to have a therapist go for a hypnosis session with Justin. And she's now using her ambition, her great qualities that got her to the level of success in Hollywood. She's now using that on a greater vision that's in service to others. And that's where she's getting her fulfillment from. And I mentioned Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber is an example who got to the top super young. Wow. That didn't fulfill him. And I know he shares a lot about Jesus and that it was for him. And now he's realizing, oh wait, I've got a deeper purpose with what I'm doing. And they're starting to now not just chase the carrot stick of, of success. They're starting to actually go within them and be like, well, this is what I believe in. And this is how I can use myself and my platform and my resources to serve. Yeah. For someone who has never really known what they believe in, and they just or they just never known, you know, that core self. How do they how do they actually begin to really get in touch with that? Is that simply through self-inquiry or through meditation? Like what would you recommend for that person to make that transition? <laughs> I would recommend that you don't overthink it and you follow the joy and what brings you connection in a way that makes you feel good and safe and others around you, of course. And it's what I loved about when I became a coach because my I have so many toolbox. It's like my, my toolbox is overflowing at the seams with all of the things I've trained in. <laughs> and why, why is that? Well, I trained in everything because I was that person. I don't know who I am. I really don't know who I am. And that was what was true for me at so many moments in my life. And I would go through these, we might have different names from it, like the, the identity crumbling down, the, the death and the rebirth moments. When you start to lose who you are, like when I was a physiotherapist transitioning to the woman who was living in India and going in from science to the mystic world, it's hard when we don't have things to hang on to. And I've done that at different versions through my life. And so I, I found yoga, I found breathwork, I found meditation, I found um, various different masters, I found acupuncturist, I found, you know, hypnosis, I found NLP, I found so many things. Um, and the mind sometimes is trying to um, go with what works for other people, which is amazing. And again, like I like to bring the extremes in, we can absolutely do that and look and find somebody who you look up to and who you admire and who when you're around them, it feels really good and you want to be around them. And oh, what are they doing? And maybe even borrow their success formula for a moment if you need it, if you just have no idea. But then there's a moment and you can choose this now or you can choose it once you've got the safety and support of someone else's strategy there is going to come a moment where you're like, enough with this BS. <laughs> this is this is what sets me alive. And I'm going to go do that. And from someone who's like lived in ashrams and lived a life of extremes, it's great. And I've loved it. And we're not taking away from anything. But sometimes we need to sit and meditate. And sometimes you just need to like 
I don't know, I mean, for the women out here, put your red, red lipstick on and go out dancing or, you know, whatever the version of for that, the guys, I don't know, smoke a cigar and drink a whiskey or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you might not do it often, but, you know, it's like giving yourself that permission that have fun with your life and spend your life doing the things that set you alive mm. and share that with everyone around you. And that's where we find our center and our core. It's from living life really aligned to what you actually want to do. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'm resonating with everything you're saying here. Um, now I, I can, uh, perceive a, an objection from me. And I, I think for a lot of people, right. It's like, yeah. well, doing what you want, that's, that's selfish. You got to think about <laughs> other people. It's not about what you want. Like, mm -hmm. how would you, re how would you respond to that kind of, um, I guess an objection or a concern? I would just get you to ask your, like really go into that and, and ask yourself when you go to your deathbed and that's what's guaranteed for all of us here in this life right that's that's where it's going it's part of life you know we've all watched lion king circle of life we've known it and only you are going to be the one in that moment looking back on your life and wondering are you okay with how you lived your life only you have that moment with the creator or whatever you believe in. And that moment is yours. And so, yes, we must ask ourselves that question because we don't want to go through life like a bulldozer, just being completely selfish, but we need to have boundaries and we need to know what we're willing to say yes to and no to in our lives. Yes, there needs to be time where we put ourselves aside because we need to show up for someone else absolutely but every day no because we know that you can't show up and support somebody if you're falling to pieces yourself and your health is compromised and your joy is compromised that's not what anybody who loves you really wants so we need this balance and you need to know that you are not a selfish being by nature. I don't believe anybody is. And so you're going to know when you need to take space out. And you need to know that you can give yourself permission to do that. Like if you're struggling and you just need to turn your phone off for like a month, you get to do that if that's what you need. And People might come in at you and, and say whatever they think. Well, I think you're being selfish. And you know, I think you need to be there for me. And that is, again, coming back to the importance of knowing your truth. Because there are, how many billion people do we have in the world? I mean, is it eight billion? Seven? Is it eight now? Oh, God. I don't know. Seven, eight billion. Okay, so that's how many unique perspectives there is for you and your life <laughs> that's a lot and we can't get swept in other people's stories and other people's traumas we have to know our truth mm -hmm. because when you know what's true for you that's what allows you to be able to navigate your life through this of when do I show up for myself and when do I show up for other people where are my boundaries? Where do I need them? Because you do need to look after the self because this is the vehicle that you're going to live your life through. So you will need to say no to things so you can say yes to yourself if you want to live a healthy, vibrant life and look after yourself and look after those that you love. And you get to choose what's true for you, no matter what people say. And we always listen. Well, let me listen. Where can I learn and grow from this perspective? Okay. And someone shares something. Great. But me. What's my version of reality? 
What's my version of the truth right now? It's crazy that I don't think a lot of people have truly asked themselves that. And that's something I try to even just a simple question. What do I want? I've been asking myself that more. Just what do I want? I could have anything. What would yeah. I want? You know, it's great. Um, I wanted to ask about, you know, some of your story. When you made these um, identity shifts, these upgrades, letting go of who you thought you were, and the relation between that and creating the life you want and, and these synchronicities. That's really fascinating to me. Um, could you talk about that? And I would love to hear, you know, what synchronicities have shown up in your life? Wow, amazing synchronicities show up in my life. And I'll share a more recent one. And I, I shared it in my book that I, I wrote, Divine Union. and. This came throughout my whole life, I guess. But when the pandemic hit in 2020 is where a lot of us paused <laughs> and we looked at things. And I realized something in that space. So maybe we could even say that that was a synchronicity. It was a, this, yeah, that that came in for me to have that space because I've been asking for space. I really need some space in my life because I'm too busy in what I'm doing to have that pause. So I've been asking for it in a way. And the way in the quantum world is you ask for what you want and need, but you don't get to control <laughs> what we love to do as humans, or certainly speaking on behalf of myself. Yeah, but I'm gonna do this and it's gonna come like that. I'm gonna take a holiday for this space. But in this quantum world, no, it's going to come to you in a way that's just right for you. And your job is to trust it and respond to that. So I got that space that I'd been desiring for. And I looked around the world and I was like, oh, my goodness. Woo. There's a lot of work to do here. And what I noticed was the people who were showing up in that time and the people who I put my faith in weren't necessarily the people who one might think, like the people in the positions of the power and in the governments. It was in the real people who were showing up as real leaders in their community and in their life. And I was like, okay, now I get it. Now I kind of understand who I am more in this world. I am here to support the leaders so that they can then spread the ripples to their communities as opposed to thinking on each individual. And the moment I was understanding myself more, ah, yes, that makes sense. So from that understanding, other synchronicities started to come in to my awareness, to, the, to my field. And I started to really notice different potentials within leaders. And now this eventually got me to a point where I was, oh, it's really leaders who are in alignment with me to work with. And that's quite a hard one to acknowledge for yourself. Because if you're saying you're here to support the leaders, then you're kind of saying you're what? Like the leader of leaders? And yeah, then that yeah. question has come in. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't say that. You're not in a position to fill those boots and those shoes. Like, who do you think you are? You know, judgments, judgments, old stories, old patterns. But this was here, like I felt this. <laughs> the judgments are here, up in the mind, not really true. And so it takes meeting this knowing in yourself with the synchronicities because you have to choose yourself and choose your truth. And I had to say, okay, it makes me uncomfortable, but no, like this is who I am. This is my path. And the more I would actually own that, and it was waves. One minute I'd be like, yes. Other minute I'd be like, oh, freaking out. So, you know, again, it's not linear. 
Um, and there came this, this moment where I realized I was in my mind a lot with trying to control how me working with the leaders were going to look. So what I personally done was I connected to the feeling of those people. You know, when you're around somebody who really inspires you and you, you just feel really good and maybe you even feel good for the rest of your day. So that's what I would connect to, how these leaders would make me feel if I was working with them. And I would bring that into my meditations, connect to the feeling of how it felt to work with them and how it would be watching them step up and lead and create the ripples in their communities that were going to change the world. And I would connect to that. And my mind had an idea of how this would look. And I was like, okay, great. Thank you, mind, for giving me things that I want to control and micromanage because I love that. But let me just take that aside. And then this is when the synchronicity has come. So I've been doing this for maybe like a week or so. And I had this real clear knowing that I had to check out this Justin Bieber videos and stuff that came. I didn't even, I hadn't followed Justin Bieber since, hey, baby, baby, baby. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't even listened to him. And I, but I just knew it. And I was like, oh, I, j I just got to trust this. And there's resistance because I was like, are you crazy, Louise? You know, you're in your 30s and you're going down this Justin Bieber rabbit hole. <laughs> hey, it's never too late to become a believer. It's, it's true. Yeah, I did. I did become a believer. I'm like, don't you have some emails to be writing? Don't you, you, know, don't you have important things you're supposed to be doing in your business? But I had to trust that because this is something coming in. And the next day I had his documentary pop up and the mind's going to go, well, of course it does because there's algorithms and now it knows you're a believer. <laughs> so things are going to be coming up, right? So the mind's going to say things and there's signs that are coming, always signs guiding. And our mind's going to try and hit it away like a, you know, tennis ball and tennis racket when these signs come in and yeah, yeah, but that's nothing. That's a this or it's a that. And it's our job to, to feel our way through that. No, but this, it doesn't make any sense here, but I just know this is the path to go down. And so I watched this documentary. Um, I can't even remember the name of it, but it was about him and his journey and everything that he went through with his breakdowns to where he is at now, like living his purpose and, and how he basically puts his life down to still being here when he had his path with Jesus and all the things that he's doing and the projects he's involved in. And I was like, oh, my God. Who knew it? Like, that's the leader. That's the leader that I've been calling in in my meditations. And I had no idea. So what's the mind going to do? Again, it's going to say, and it did do, by the way, this is crazy. This doesn't make sense. You're delusional. So I was like, okay, I just need a sign from from the field, I, I the unified field, the quantum field. Some people might say God or the universe, just whatever, whatever feels true or in line for you. Okay, I need a sign that this is from source. And I was driving my car to meet friends for dinner, parked my car. It's at the marina in Ibiza and I got out and instantly after asking for that sign from source, a yacht was pulling into the marina playing Justin Bieber's song. I get my life straight from the source, yeah. Ooh, that's... I don't know the worst of it. The, and I was like, okay, following the signs. Okay, but will you trust the signs is our question to ourself. Mm -hmm. Can you allow yourself to go down the obscene curveballs that are coming your way based to what your intention is? The, these curveballs being the, the mind or like just like mm -hmm. events. The, the curveballs is what's actually coming up in the signs in your life. I'm nice. connecting in. My intention is to connect with the leaders who are really here to create change in this world for the greater good. That's my intention. That's what I know I'm here to do. I've recognized something in myself, a deeper layer that I've never allowed myself to go before. That's a new identity, right? Going from somebody who's now saying, I'm here to lead leaders. That's a whole new identity. That's shaky. That's edgy. Why am I here to do that? Well, because I believe that they're here to serve the community. And when I get the leaders, that's going to help create the ripples that we need in the world right now. Okay, great. So let me wait back and see what signs come in. The signs come in. It's Justin Bieber. What? 
mind says, that's crazy. I'm not going to go there. Oh, wait, but no, that's a sign. I feel it. Uh, let me trust myself and follow that. And the more that I done that, the more that I followed these breadcrumbs that were the curve balls, I had not seen that coming. My mind couldn't have created that. And that's beautiful because the mind creates from limits, usually based on the past. It tries to predict the future from the past. This was a whole new timeline coming in and a whole new reality of my life that was not linked with the past. These were the curveballs. I followed them. And eventually what I said one day, because again, this was the new identity piece. And I was like, I am here to support the Hollywood level leaders because they have the impact. They have the platform. They have the resources that is going to really create the change if they are conscious and supported in their higher path. And so what happened was, I was like, I'm gonna have to own this new identity now. I'm gonna have to embody that. And I remember saying, okay, I'm here for that. And I would start telling my friends, oh, by the way, I'm gonna be working with people in Hollywood and helping them on their mission for the greater good. And I would have to tell them that. That's me choosing a different identity. That's me choosing a whole new version of myself and I'm claiming it and I'm saying it like it's true. Was it true? I didn't know, but I felt it. What happened was I got a phone call a few days later from somebody who I know saying, I've got a client that I know your work's going to be amazing for and blah, 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 blah. And then I heard the words, you know what it's like being working in the Hollywood scene and Hollywood movies. And I was like, oh my goodness. And it just came. And that's another sign. It's another synchronicity because, <laughs> because I chose to trust in the signs that were coming in that made no sense to my mind that eventually allowed me to be in the position that I am because I chose the new identity. Hmm. I would tell people this is now who I am and how I'm working with and signs come in and I trusted them and I followed them and it became not just in my mind or a fantasy it became my reality yeah so when you when you say you chose this identity did you actually feel that identity like did that feel true in the sense of like it was uh, I'm trying to articulate this like it was natural like when you say you chose it you like you felt like yeah yeah I'm this person that's working with Hollywood people hell yeah is that yes it felt like like it didn't come from my mind it just came in and it was so out the blue now I am not saying I didn't oscillate in and out of trust and doubt <laughs> trust and doubt trust and doubt so when I say I chose it is there were more doubts coming in than the moments where I felt certain mm. so I had to rewire myself not to believe the doubts and the limits that were coming up and you know saying yeah but if you got to meet people like that and they experienced your work they would think that you were I don't know, rubbish, that's quite a British word, or maybe... Yeah, yeah, rubbish, yeah. <laughs> they'll just, like, complain, and, like, they'll tell everyone in their circles that you're a fraud, and you're a blah, and, you know, your, your friends are going to think that, like, you think you're too good for them, and you tell them this, and they're going to, you know... No, no one done that, by the way. This is what goes on in the mind. Mm -hmm. They create stories based on the emotional imprints in my body and in my mind. So that gets to be my work, what comes up. You know, back to what we were actually saying, I, I don't have to judge myself around this. Oh, okay, so I'm not feeling so safe in choosing this path that I know is for me. Well, what do I need to do? Well, of course, being a coach, I have a coach. I had a, I, ha I actually did have a hip, hypnosis session with Justin I would go to an acupuncture I would do the work on all the layers of myself and I would do the work to create the safety in my nervous system 
to follow that, but I had to choose it every day and think new thoughts and rewire my whole being to believe that I was worthy of fulfilling that mission that I felt came from my source, from my center, from my core. Yeah. So it wasn't like one day I just chose it and then that's it. I was just confident. I didn't have any doubts. I didn't have any shaky moments. I had to work on that. I had to choose it every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what it sounds like is, and, and let me know if you resonate with this or this is accurate, that, well, first of all, it's like there, there are doubts and the universe, God, whatnot, is very forgiving on that. Because <laughs> it's not like we can still have doubts and it still it still happens. Um, but but secondly, um, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, it, it's like only when you chose to step out in faith, even though you had the doubts, that's when the synchronicities came. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know what's so interesting? I call in people who are on the Hollywood level of success. And I don't say that because they're, there's above and a below anyone, by the way, but we all know that there are very few people who make it to that level of, of if you're an actor or an actress. So what would we build in our mind about these people? You would think that to get to that level, they have no doubts, right? They don't have the same... <laughs> Right. They're um, gods. Patience. Yeah, you know, again, we put them up in these pedestals. And I started working with really successful people, more successful than I could ever have possibly imagined for myself. And they have the same stuff going on, the same stories, but they are maybe more practiced or, or willing or able to still go for it. Hmm. They're okay with the rejection. They're okay with facing, being putting themselves out there and being seen as a failure. They, they make peace with that and they keep going and they keep going. They've had so many people say no, but they keep going and they keep going and they keep going. And, you know, they're, there are moments where I've had in my life, especially, like I said, when 2020 hit, I had a really successful in-person business doing retreats on the island of Ibiza that all fell to the ground. And there were moments when I was building up a new business where I had no evidence to suggest I was on the right path. Like I had no mm -hmm. money. I was literally broke. I had, there was nothing showing me. It wasn't like all of a sudden I was a success. And I just had to keep on going and I had to keep on believing even when there was no evidence to suggest that. And, you know, I see the same on, on their level is there's maybe not the evidence to suggest that they can do what they've achieved, but they just keep going and keep going with their doubts, with all of the human stuff that we've all got, with the stories, with them telling themselves, well, maybe you're not good enough for this or that. And they just keep going and they keep going and they keep going. Yeah. And we're all the same. We think the same. We've got the same stories going on. And that was beautiful to me. I was like, oh, okay, wow. Oh, there isn't this level to get right. to. We're just all in this journey together. And we need to really help support one another not to believe the limitations and the stories and we are, can all achieve what that success is. And of course, it doesn't only need to be like Hollywood movies or this or that, but if you, like me, have this feeling that I actually think I'm meant for more, I actually think I'm meant for more. And, you know, we were talking about when you asked Justin, people might say with even doing our practices, is, is that selfish? And that stuff comes up, oh, but you've got a really great life. It's amazing. Like, how can you want more? Is that is that being mm. self? Yeah, yeah. And we'll judge ourselves for that. But then again, you know, we'll judge yourself more when we get to the end of our lives and we think, I could have 
been more of who I am. I could have served the world more. I could have shown more of who I was and I could have made a, a change to the world. And when I say that, it might just be your family or, or your community or, you know, your children or, you know, your lovers or whatever that might be. It doesn't need to be global scale. And if you feel that, then I give you the permission slip if you're looking for it to go for that because this is your life and if you have a feeling that there's more more of yourself more you can impact this world and the life and those you love and around you then who are you not to Ooh, it's a great question we're gonna need that permission slip in writing Little yeah. Louis stamp of approval. Boom. I, I, I will give you a stamp. I was looking. And yeah. the reason I say that is because I was looking for some permission slip for as long as I can remember. Yeah. You can't give it to ourselves. You don't need it for me. But if anybody is looking for that, <laughs> here it is. Maybe Ooh. that's the synchronicity, right? Maybe this is the sign. If you've been looking exactly. for that sign, then guess what? You are watching this for a reason. Mm. And this is your sign. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I, I'm curious, like, what, what do you think kept you going in all that pain and, and uh, just any normal person who would go through that, you know, would probably give up. What, what do you think kept you going? Well, the pain of giving up became more than the pain of keeping on going. I could not allow myself to shrivel and shrink as my soul. I'd done that for <laughs> most of my life. I'd been another version of who I thought I needed to be for the world. And this was me finally like, I'm ready for this deeper claiming of who I, who I am and for the pain to stay stuck. I just couldn't do that to myself. Um, you know, bringing it back, as I say, it was just last night I was watching Lord of the Rings and it was the two towers um, and it was like near the end and Frodo and Sam, you know, the rings taking Frodo over, he's heavy in the pain and they've lost people they love and they're such a long way from the Shire. And I can't remember exactly the words, but, you know, Sam was giving this speech to Frodo and it's like, no one wants to be in the situations of pain and struggle and, and darkness, but the reason they keep going is because there's, there's a belief and a hope that there's a good in this world and it's worth fighting for. And that's a great reflection for us. It's like, it's got to be worth fighting for. Yeah. I had a why and, you know, we might hear that a few times within, you know, the coaching world and the self-development world is what's your why? And for me, I just couldn't, for me, I'm not saying it is this way, but for this is how it felt for me. If I didn't do this, it would feel like I seen something that I could have supported in this world and I seen it for others. And I went, oh, okay, well, it's a bit too much for me. So everyone's just gonna have to deal with that on their own. And I couldn't do that. It, I, my why was too strong. This isn't even for me. And it's great when it's not about yourself. When it's about yourself, it's like, oh, you know, manana, manana, I'll do it tomorrow. It's okay. It's But when it's more than you, then yeah. that's going to be the reason it gets you out of bed in those days where I definitely had. And hey, I still have. <laughs> I still have those days where I want to give up. And I still have those days where I doubt myself and wonder if it's all worthwhile. I still have it. And I've got my why. And it's my amazing clients. And when I see them light up, and I've got some of them who are coaches and transformation facilitators and, you know, sexual, um, sexual healing facilitators, all sorts of things in this mixed bag. And when I'm showing up for, for them and supporting them and seeing the ripples that they create and the changes they're making, not only to themselves, but to those they're serving, I know this is transforming the world. I know this is my greater calling. And that 
gets me out of bed on those days where I'm like, I'm done. And it, again, it just actually leads back to that thing about taking care of the self versus the others. And this is where the balance is in. Because we've maybe all done this before. I don't know about you, Justin. Working in the type of work that you do, we tend to have patterns of overgiving and burn out. Mm-hmm. And I've burnt out. And guess what? I had to take a month off, serving no one, doing nothing, not good for anyone around me, not my relationship, not my friendships, not anybody. And this is where the balance comes in. Have your greater purpose, be in service to something beyond yourself. But the only way you're going to do that is showing up for yourself, being selfish where you need to, and giving yourself that care. That is a wonderful balance and just well articulated. Thank you so much. Um, and on that on that note, um, if anybody wants to work with you, uh, where can they find you? Oh, I would love that. Yeah. So if anybody's feeling like something's just been switched on or activated, or you're just really curious, you're like, hey, actually, yes, I know there's more of me. And I know there is more that I can do with my life. And I'm not willing to get to the end of my days with those type of regrets. I'm here and I'm fully in. Then you can contact me if people have Facebook or Instagram or my website, either way, it's perfect. I'm Louise Cameron Edlund on Instagram, louisecameronedlund.com for my website. And just go ahead and reach out. You can either just like hit me up in the DMs or an email and we can chat and I can send you over an application form if you're feeling curious to come on a call. Perfect. And I have all those links uh, in the description. Yeah. And uh, there's anything, any like last words you just want to share and just get out? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I do. I actually have. I could send you the link. You know that uh, quantum activation that I done? That meditation? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, send me the link and I'll put it in there. I'll send you the link for that for, for anybody who wants to just really receive the activation and the subconscious transformations through a meditative way. I've created a meditation that I'll share with Justin. Immerse yourself into that. And the final words I would say, and what's coming through is really about trusting yourself and trusting life and looking to people that inspire you and using them as beautiful inspirations and getting the tools and great but committing yourself every day to do something that's so deeply, truly you. Whether it be, do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my style. I've been, I've been feeling I want to update my word. Or do you know what? I've been feeling that I want to learn a language or I want to go to this dance class or whatever that might be. These little thoughts that you have. Don't let them just be thoughts. Take an action on them. Oh, I've been meaning to message that person or whatever it is. So just take a moment. Think on the beautiful things swirling around your head that you would love to do. Even if it's just for your day or it's for your week, it doesn't need to be like huge global scale. And just think, what do I really want to do today? What's something I've been desiring? And what am I ready to take action on and make happen? and make that commitment to yourself right here, right now. Take a moment to reflect if you need and take that action on that desire because you're so worth it. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm getting pumped up here. I feel like I just got some like major inspiration and I just, I love, I'm just resonating with everything that you're saying. So Louise, um, actually before I just end this, I just want to, say I've, I've done a session with louise and she knows what the f she's doing she's very very good so i really highly recommend her uh check out her stuff and uh thank you so much for coming on this was a very fruitful and fascinating discussion yeah and 
people leave the comments let let me know your takeaways or you know justin had the objections please object please share things this is what's beautiful this is where we learn and yeah i would just love to hear from from everyone and also i have received a session with justin and he also knows what the f he's <laughs> doing thanks thank you <laughs> So yeah, anyone who's been, maybe that's people's actions. Maybe people have been watching this, teetering yeah. on this, and that's the action. But whatever that is, it's all perfect. Take your action for yourself, for your life. Trust yourself that you know what you need and what you want because you do. Yes. All right. We're going to make that commitment. And Woo. thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Lots of love from Ibiza.